I'm very sure that we can all agree that Buzamon is definitely the most hyped Digimon from the Digital Hazard set. Like I mentioned before in my opening, I'll be doing a deck profile for him. And I would like to welcome all of you guys to the ultimate in-depth guide to the Bilzamon deck. Hello Digimon players and fans, welcome back to another deck profile and in-depth building guide video. As soon as EXO2 Digital Hazard dropped, I immediately got myself the entire playset for the Beelzemon core, and then I began playing the deck right away. Beelzemon is one of my personal favorite Digimon of all time, I remember watching that guy during the show and he was so cool, especially when he turned into blast mode. But not only that, the alt arts from this Digital Hazard set has made me love the cards even more than ever. We even pulled a original Altar Beelzemon from opening a bunch of BT1 packs during my Ultimate Cup prizing video. Just like always, we got lots to cover today for the in-depth building guide. We got a deck profile, other tech choices that you can add to the deck, and a quick combo segment to teach you guys how to play the deck. The main mechanic of Beelzemon archetype is to trash cards from the top of your deck and have multiple effects activate while doing so. When certain cards are being trashed, you gain a lot of different advantages. Just like most concepts of other purple decks, the more you have in trash, the better it is, and that is because they act as a resource to feel towards your combos later on. However, Beelzebub trash is faster than ever, so fast to the point that it's not like anything we've ever seen in the Digimon card game. The deck also has a very aggressive control style when it comes to deleting your opponent's Digimon, and that is so to maintain board advantage at all times. Now do you guys want to see some gameplay of me piloting the Beelzemon deck against other various decks? If you do, then you gotta subscribe and turn on that notification bell right now to stay tuned as soon as that video comes. Also give this video a like as it will help tell me that you guys are dead serious about it and you really want to see some gameplay. Now let's get into the deck profile. Alright, let's begin with our Digia cards. First off, we have 4 Pagumons from the Star Deck 6 and we have 1 Pagumon from BT2. Pagumons, both of them really just help you mill and trash more cards from your deck. The one from Star Deck 6 is on deletion trash 2, and then the one from BT2 is when attacking trash the top 1. And milling is just really important. I really want to prioritize synergizing everything with our effects and try to mill as fast as possible, which is why I decided to go for this uh, digi egg count right here. So let's start off with our rookies. Really, all our rookies are just Impmons. We have the four copies of the EXO2 Impmon right here, he does quite a number of things. His first effect is that when this card is trashed from the deck, other than being trashed by its own effect, you can trash another three cards from the top of your deck. Allowing you to really like get your trashing turbo going on, which is really, really great when you do do your trashing combos. Other than that, he is your on-play searcher, allowing you to reveal the top four cards of your deck, grabbing yourself a Beelzemon and Ayamako, which are really crucial to help you setting up for your later plays as well. Not only that, he also has a Inheritable, which is really good, giving your Beelzemon extra 3,000 DP during your turn. And this card is just really good, really key, because it's just so versatile and he can do so many things. So 100% four copies is a must. Next up, we have the other four copies of the BT2 Impmon right here. This one is very simple. On deletion, you trash the top three cards of your deck. And this guy is always the guy you want to be seeing in the early game so you can get your trashing combos. Comboing it along with your Pagumon is always great because that's instantly trash five. When it is deleted, it only has 1k DP, so it will, it will basically get deleted when it swings against anything in security other than tamers and options. And yeah, you, I maximize this at four for consistency in trashing. Now for the other Impmons. Right here, this is the BT6 Impmon. So this is the final available Impmon to us. And uh, this one in the middle is the Altar, just so you guys know. This one is really good in terms of like mid-game and late-game because we can recur our Beelzemons uh, back from the trash. Now keep in mind, you actually can't grab Blast Mode because Blast Mode does not have 7 Great Demon Lords or 3 Musketeers in its traits. So I kind of like to keep this at 3 because having 4 is a bit too much. 
uh, and we see it consistently enough to sort of grab the cards that we need uh, for the later in the play. And generally, there is uh, in helping us, you know, go for some other combos when we need to later on. To round off for rookies, we have the three copies of Psychmon right here. The reason why he is really crucial is I mainly play this card to combat against the Reaper. The Reaper is a hard counter to this deck. It renders half your deck of your effects completely useless, which is really, really bad, which is why Psychmon really comes in to help you get that advantage a little back, even if it's just a little bit. But Psychmon actually really, really hits hard into the Reaper because it stops your reduction cost on play so that you can actually slow them down and you can keep back pace up and you might have a chance of a window to one shot them or uh, take them down when you need to. So that's Psychmon three copies there. That's it for all the rookies. Let's now showcase you guys the level four champions. Start off, we have this new card right here, which is Doberman. He does a few things, which is really useful. First thing is if you have an Alice on the board, you can reduce the hard play cost of this guy by two, meaning him he is basically a three drop. However, just so you guys know, I don't play Alice in this current build. The main thing you want to do with this card is its second effect. On deletion, you can trash the top three cards of your deck and then return one purple Digimon card or Tamer card from your trash back to your hand. So really good card to help you regain your resources. I would The reason why I play four of this is because I kind of argue it's even better than the Impmon that grabs your uh, seven great Demon Lords back because this one can grab you basically anything that is purple Tamer or purple Digimon back. And yeah, that's why I like four copies. Next up, we have three Devimons. This is your crucial blocker, uh, really helps you accelerate your digivolving into your threes and then into your sixes, which is great. And blocker is just always nice. And yeah, just a little bit of defensive capability, but I mainly play it for its digivolving costs. Last but not least to round up for the level fours, I have two Lowies right here, which is basically your hybrid free game. Sometimes he comes up and it's gonna be really helpful and useful and you need that extra swing. So yeah, that's it for the level fours. Let's talk about the level fives. This card I haven't played in a while, but I like him so much in this deck. We have four copies of Black War Gralmon. I remember one of the very first deck profiles I did on the channel was Chaos Gallimon Purple deck, and that was really cool. And it's really nice to see Black War Gralmon having a very nice fit along with this deck and making a comeback. He does a lot of things for you too. Main Digiburst 3, and he can play a low 3 back from your trash that is purple. However, you don't get any on play effects. That's not really important. You don't really need the on play effects, although it would be nice. But we mainly play it for its inheritable because when attacking, you can delete one of your other Digimon to unsuspend this Digimon. So then you can make multiple checks with it, which is really nice. And that's what its Digiburst effect is really there for, where it helps you guarantee that you have another Digimon so that you can pop it for its inheritable. Next up, we have this BT8 card, which I was waiting for it to be very useful as soon as EX2 drops because it fits into Bilzama very nicely as well. And that card right here is the Skull Sadamon. When did you volume? You trash the two top two cards of your deck, synergizes with the milling, fantastic, and then return one card with Demon Lord and its traits from your trash back to your hand. Now that is really good because you can basically grab any of your Bilzamons, including the Blast Mode back which is why I really like this Go Sadamon. And then it's inheritable is also really nice because real turn once returned when a card is trashed from your deck, you gain a memory. And that helps you, you know, get your little bit memory going and then you can make some uh, more flexible plays during your turn, which is really nice. That's it for the level fives. Let's talk about our level sixes, which is all our Beelzemons. So as we get into our Beelzemons, we have the four copies of the EXO2 Beelzemon right here. This one on the left, once again, is the Altar. I really love this Altar. He looks so cool. The illustration is just absolutely fantastic. And I know all of you guys can 100% agree as well. But yeah, back to talking about the card. When this card is actually trash from your deck, you can play one Impmon from your trash without paying memory costs. And then you actually get to do your on plays with your Impmon, which is very nice. Next up, when Digivolving and when attacking, keep in mind, this is not once per turn too. You can trash the top two cards of your deck to delete one of your opponent's level three Digimon. Now for every 10 cards in your trash, you can increase that level of deletion by one. If you have 10, you increase it to level four. If you have 20, you increase it to level five. And in a, sometimes in the crazy late game stages where you do have 30, you basically be deleting your opponent's level sixes. And this is the card that you wanna be turbo intoing in every single of your games so that you can get the trashing going on because you can go, do it again and again and it just does it so quickly and he's just that good of a card. So yeah. Next up, we have 
two Beelzemans from BT2. Man, both these artworks are just absolutely stunning. The one on the right is the Altart. I, I love them both so much. Anyways, this is your warping one, where if you have 10 cards in your trash, you can warp Digivolve this on top of an Intmon for a four cost memory, which is really good. And then when Digivolving, you can delete one of your opponent's level for a lower Digimon. I really want to fit three in this deck to get the consistency going. However, it was very tight to find room. And I know sort of a little bit of the optimal ratio is to have three copies of this card because you do want to see it and you can warp and do your combos into your Blastmo sometimes, which is really nice. And again, I will showcase that later in the combo segment. Um, but yeah, there was just no room and I play a bit more of recurring uh, cards so that I can recur this from the trash a little bit more faster and consistent compared to other builds. That's sort of my approach on it. So yeah, two copies right here. Now for the blast mode, this is your level seven boss Digimon right here. He is your final go-to of this deck and he is just an absolute monster when you fulfill so many conditions. Well, the first thing is, if this card is trashed from your deck, you can pop a level 4 or lower of your opponent's Digimon, which is really nice, and you always want to be trashing this card in your uh, from your deck, and you want to be seeing this card in your trash instead of your hand. However, sometimes having one in your hand is not too bad too, because sometimes you might have to Digivolve for 6, and it can be a decent payoff uh, if you don't have your uh, Tamer set up. However, when Digivolving, you delete all of your opponent's highest level Digimon. So he can potentially board wipe your opponent, which is absolutely crazy. And not only that, is during your turn, for every 10 cards in your trash, he gains security plus one. Not only that, he's also 15 KDP, which is very powerful and very strong by itself. Also, once again, I'll show you guys how to optimally be playing this card in the combo segment uh, later on. So that's it for all of our Digimon. And let's talk about our Tamers. For the Tamers, all I run are the four copies of Ayan Mako. Ayan Mako is your dedicated tamer for the Beelzemon and the Impmon deck. You have to maximize it, this card at four simply because you trash so much that often enough you'll be trashing these cards and you want to potentially have one in your hand. And all you need is really one because first of all, this is your memory tamer. And secondly, its main effect is what combos along your Beelzemon into blast mode, which is very crucial to your plays. Because when your turn, when you attack with a Digimon, you can, you can suspend this Tamer to trash the top card of your deck. And then if that attacking Digimon was a Beelzemon, you can Digivolve it into a Blast Mode for a cost of 3. Keep in mind, this does not reduce the cost. Which, although I would hope it reduces the cost, that means you can stack the effects. That would be really nice, but then it will be a bit too broken. So it just strictly just says, play it for 3 cost. I mean, Digivolve it for 3 cost on top of Beelzemon. Which is really, really crucial and important to the combos once again. That's it for the Tamers. We don't need any other Tamers other than them. So we're going to go into our options right here. 4 Death Slingers. This card is just insanely good. When this card is milled from your deck, you get to gain a memory. That's really good because sometimes you even get to mill during your opponent's turn. And when it does mill, it's kind of like a pseudo hammer spark, which is really good. And then next, its main effect is you delete one of your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon. Now for every 10 cards in your trash, you can increase the level by 1. And this card is only 4 cost. We consistently can get to 10 cards very quickly, even in the early stages of the game. So we can constantly be deleting opponent's level 5. And then when it goes to the mid game, we're always going to be having 20 cards in our trash, meaning that for a four cost, we can just instantly delete a level six. And then of course, potentially in the late game, if you do have 30, you can delete level sevens. And that's really, really insane just with the four cost and security effect. You basically activate the main effect as well, which is really, really good. So you want to maximize this at four copies. Now I got three Miss Memory Boosts. Miss Memory Boost is again, a very nice memory boost option that helps you synergize with more trashing because you trash the top two cards of your deck and they get to draw one and then delay gain two memory and yeah three is really good some people want to run four for even more consistency because this card is that good and sometimes having the delay to gain two memory does help you greatly with some of the combos too last but not least i have one calling from the darkness i like this as my final one single lit tech is because um specifically Sometimes you just really need an alternative way to recur your resources. Now, I find myself in many situations where I swing all their opponent's security with my Beelzemon Blast Mode, and I can't go for a game. However, I have an unsuspended Ayamako, 
in my battle area and Laoi is in my trash. So all I have to do is have three memory. I play calling for one to pop anything to grab myself the Lowie and then I can go into my hybrid for game. It's just really that important to have this card sometimes and it just really helps you give that extra push. But not only that, you can just quickly grab some resources you need uh, back from your trash with it generally to help yourself set up in the mid game as well. So I really like this card as a one. -off. Now that we got the main deck completed, let's show you guys a couple of other alternative options or other cards you can add in as consideration into the deck. First off, I want to talk about Digimon, which is Gazimon right here, which is very good for uh, stopping your opponents from gaining memory with different effects. Uh, however, like I mentioned earlier, D Reaper is just such a hard counter to this deck. I'd rather save the three slots that I had earlier for the three Psychmons instead. You can juggle between the ratios depending on whatever matchups you guys feel like. Gazimon does work quite decently at those times too. Next up, we have one Soulmon. Soulmon has a Inheritable, which is exactly the same as the Skull Sadamon, which we have in our main deck, where your turn once per turn, when, you, when a card is trashed from your deck, you gain a memory, which is really nice. And you can gain a lot of memory with the combination of two. And if you guys like gaining a lot of memory to make more plays, and that is your more of your play style, Soulmon is definitely a great addition. Next up, I have a Devidramon which offers retaliation. Now it's kind of interesting because this entire deck does not have retaliation, which it should because it's purple generally, but I just really like the consistency and I don't really feel like I really need retaliation anyways because I can pop so many things with my effects generally. Devi Jermon gives you that though, and it gives you a bit more control. Not only that, as Inheritable is also really nice because when attacking, you can trash the top two cards of your deck to really help you uh, synergize with trashing. So that's it for the Digimon suggestions. Let's uh, talk about some tamers. The first one let's show you guys is Alice McCoy, which is from EX2. Uh, she combos very nicely with Dobermans, especially when I play four copies. Uh, I did test her out. She can come in quite nice and handy because she's only a two cost and her effect is quite neat because when one of your Digimon would Digivolve from a level five to a level six, you can delete one of your Digimon to reduce the Digivolution cost by three, meaning that you can Digivolve into Abusemon for, for free. And then afterwards, you can follow with a blast mode, uh, which is very nice as well uh, when you do so. Um, however, I feel like sometimes the combo is a little bit clunky with her in it. So throughout my playtesting, I just preferred her as... Um, therefore, I kind of feel like I didn't really want to add her to the main deck at, at the end. Next up, another really good tamer is Sora and Mimi right here. Once again, like the Reaper, the Reaper has no levels. If you have Sora and Mimi on the board, you're always constantly gaining that extra two memory every turn, which is really, really nice and fantastic. And also, it can give you a bit of uh, cycling because when one of your purple Digimon attacks, you can draw one and trash one, which is kind of neat. And uh, also, the other thing in a general sense is that you pop your opponent's board all the time. Um, your lower end popping capabilities is very, very frequent and very consistent. You can actually, this tamer does pull off quite nicely. However, I just can't find slots to include this extra tamer. And I really don't want to feel like I want to take out one I am Mako just for the sake of having them. Uh, because again, like I mentioned, consistency of seeing that tamer is way more crucial than seeing this one in particular. So if you guys can find room, uh, definitely add this card in as well, which is kind of nice. So that's it for tamers. Now let's fin finalize it up with some of the other options. One right here, we have Glaive Memory Boost. Um, this is just really good in helping you uh, recur some resources. It's very similar to Miss Memory Boost because it has delay gain two memory, that's ma the main goal, but uh, its main is to return one purple Digimon card from your trash back to your hand, and then you place this card in the battle area. And yeah, because you trash so much cards, sometimes you might want to really play this card to grab yourself something back. However, I just prefer prioritizing uh, Miss Memory Boost once again, just because of consistency sake and to really help me trash and turbo trash as fast as I can. That's my game plan and that's my focus. But this is also a nice card to add for sure. Next up for more trashing, I initially really tested this card in my first initial draft build and I kind of actually like it. Uh, over time, I was just like, oh, maybe I don't, didn't really like need it anymore. It's Darkness Wave because you, for one cost, you trash the top three cards of your deck. And then if you have a yellow Digimon in play, return one yellow or purple Digimon card from your trash to your hand. Now, however, the downside is, as you guys can read, uh, you can't use the second part of the effect. So it's really just a one cost to mill three, but it's very efficient. I did play three, three to four copies in my initial draft, and I was turboing trashing like crazy with this card, which is really, really nice. And also its security effect is activating its main effect, and it can really come in clutch sometimes. 
Uh, however, I decided to not include it anymore, but I think some builds do include her, uh, this specific option. Last but not least, we have one Jack Raid. Now, initially, when it comes to theory testing or theory building, you would think that Jack Raid makes a whole lot of sense because you're trashing so many cards, your Jack Raid can constantly gain you two or three memory. And that's absolutely fantastic, right? And sometimes I swear, there's times I just wish I had a Jack Raid and I could pull off an extra crazy combo that same turn. And that and that's all I need. I wish I just had one. Because in that late game scenario, I'll be like, oh, there's 30 cards in the trash. I can gain three memory with it. And it's just so good. However, there's one huge downside. If you ever mill your Jack Raid, it's essentially a dead card. And it feels really, really bad. So you guys are going to have to weigh the pros and cons if you ever want to add this card in. Simply because if you add you want to add four copies so that you will guarantee yourself at least one copy in your hand when you do mill it to increase the chances. But if you only play less than four, if you mill all of them, they're really just useless cards in your trash, which is really unfortunate. So that's the trade off you have. But the other flip side of why it's really good is I kind of like it if it comes in security. And that is because it acts essentially the same as a hammer spark for more defensive capabilities. Our security is not really strong and our only source of security removal is Death Slinger. So if you guys want a bit more defensive style of play, Jack Rain might be for you. But that's it for all the options and all the tech cards that I want to show you guys that you can guys can swap around for ratios and try out for yourself. And yeah. All right, guys. Now that we showed all the cards and different options that you guys be, can be playing for the deck, let's show you the favorite part of the video, the combo segment. Now... For combos in this deck, there isn't really just like a flexible or many different types of combos because it really depends on what you mill. Uh, so the game plan in the early game is you want to be hatching your egg, ideally the Pagumon, and you want to be digivolving your Impmon, that's BC2, on top of it so that you're getting your re yourself ready, set up for the next turn to start swinging and then hoping it for it to be deleted and then trashing cards from your deck. You instantly trash five from here. And like I mentioned, it really depends on what you end up trashing from your deck to see where your combos end up at. You know, if you trash like Death Slingers, you'll be gaining memory. If you trash Blast Modes, uh, you get to pop your opponent's Digimon. And if you trash Buzamon, you can bring back the Impmon, which is really nice. It's kind of high rolly sometimes, but you just got to do what you got to do. You have to mill. That's really the core idea of it. You know, if you don't see that, and hopefully you do see Miss Memory Boost. Try to play Miss Memory Boost as much as you can as well. Set yourself up and gain that memory. Now, the thing is, you don't really need to pop your Miss Memory Boost in the early stages of the game. You always want to sort of hold off to it so then it will help you in the later game combos. But sometimes you might need to choke in pivotal points of the game to really control the state a bit more. Then go for it. So that's really your early game plan. Now, the secondary plan is once you got this established, you want to find yourself an opportunity to play your Ion Mako somehow. And yeah, they're your memory setter, which is really crucial and you need it. So now let's move into the building stack sort of idea of combo. You know, when you digivolve your Impmon, you want to digivolve the EXO21 uh, to give your Buzamon top end extra 3000 DP. So it becomes really strong. Did you evolve into a Devimon for one? And then you go into your Black or Growlmon and you wait. So now your opponent uh, would do their thing and pass you to three. Let's just say that they got rid of this or whatnot. Back to your turn. You move your Black or Growlmon up. Digi Burst. Three. Uh, choose the Impmon you want to play. Whichever one you have, depending on the situation. Uh, you know, if you need to... Do whatever you need to do but let's just say for whatever sake let's just play this regular impmon right here now you did evolve to zero uh for three into your buzamon at this point you really should have more than 10 cards in your trash so you can easily pop a level four with the buzamon here so you'd be trashing two when did evolving and then uh keep in mind it's always optional to trash the top two cards of your deck also, the other thing is, since it's optional, it means then then the second part of the effect is to delete your opponent's level 3 or lower doesn't mean that you have to trash to do it. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, if any of you guys are judges who are watching this video, help me clarify this ruling, but that's what I was told. And that's what I understood for this time being when I record this video. Some clarification would be nice. But anyways, um, you pop your stuff and then you swing in with the Buzamon. You pop your Impmon, allowing to unsuspend 
and this is where you can choose if you will really want to go into your blast mode or not i would only go into the blast mode if there's something to pop on your opponent's side of the board if there isn't i really wouldn't recommend doing it because it will not be as good value as you think it is uh anyways uh being able to restand right here prevents your opponent from attacking into the biosamon that's the main idea and the main goal of it so you swing whatever and then it survives and then um you pass your opponent to their next turn and they pass back to you at three in the next turn uh this is when you really want to make sure that your blast mode is in your trash to set yourself up right here now what you want to do next is once again um perhaps let's just say there is another bot uh, body and board it does require some a very specific scenario sometimes but if you have it then that's optimal if you don't have it that's fine if you have another imp mount on board then fantastic because that means you can swing in right here suspend the ayamako trash one you can trash with biozamon here as well to trash two and then you get to pop things you pop the impmon trash even more you get to unsuspend right here and then your iron mako will also once again resolve allowing you to go into the blast mode uh, which is unsuspended and you count how many checks there are and often enough you have 20 plus if that's three checks or four checks you get to wipe out all your opponent's security hoping that the blast mode doesn't get deleted from there you pay the three so you at zero and your opponent's security is cleared you swing in for game and that's basically the combo you really want to go into along with your blast mode that will conclude for my very own deck building strategy and in-depth guide for the Beelzemon deck profile if you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful please give it a like if you have any suggestions recommendations or questions be sure to share it with everyone in the comment section down below to overall conclude for the video and the deck, I'm generally not too much of a purple main player, despite it being one of my favorite colors because it has all the cool Digimon in it. With all honesty, I'm not a really great player when it comes to the complexity of making flexible plays and combos. However, the Buzamon deck was fairly straightforward to understand and the style seems to suit quite well with me. If any of you guys who are looking to get into purple, I would 100% recommend the Buzamon deck. I would also recommend you guys to start with a generic game plan and goal when building your deck to help keep consistency for starters. Once you have become more familiar with the deck, I would then start venturing out into other specific tech cards and options to build different variations and find what suits you the best. Once again, if you guys want to see some gameplay with Buzamon, then be sure to hit that subscribe button right now, turn on that notification bell to stay tuned. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. See you in the next video. This is Vault, signing out.